All right, Rambam Severa Mizvot. Mizvot, I say a positive commandment. The last thing that we read was Mizvah, Chof Ayin Aleph, number 171. <clears throat> we got through the different discussion of the <clears throat> Hagim oriented Mizvot and ended with the Mahasita Shechel. We're up to Mizvah, Chof Ayin Bed, number 172. As I said yesterday, uh, Rambam's taking a little bit of a turn. Now, um, it is not an exact segue from the previous to this Mizvah, but maybe we'll mention a connection. Anyway, there's a Mizvah for us to listen, to obey the prophets and the command of the prophets, whatever he asks of us. Even should it seem the opposite of a specific or general mizvah, of one of the mizvah that we've been talking about, he says, on the condition that were that to be the case, that it would be temporary. So the mizvah said to hear in the beam, regardless really of what they command you, seemingly, but if they command something, that's contrary to Torah law, um, that would only be incumbent upon us to listen if it's a temporary demand of the Navi. Not that she should ever command, command instruct us to consistently either add on to or detract from Torah, that would be uh, something that we're not obligated to listen to the Nabi. And in fact, that might indicate that he's not a true prophet. As he explained, the Rambam said in his introduction to Perushim of the to the, his Perush of Mishnah. The source for this Mizvah is Omro Elav Tishma'on. The Navi that I chose, God says, he to he, you should listen. But as soon as the Frey Hakamim analyzed that, he left his mouth. A filu amar lech abor alahat or amar lecha abor alahat min hamizdvot hakituvot ba Torah the fisha shema alo. Even if he's actually telling us to um, transgress and violate a mizvah that you know to be a Torah obligation, still listen to him. And in fact, should you not obey the instructions of the prophet, it's a serious sin, serious punishment, and how do we know this? Pasuk tells us, God says that I will seek him out, the person who didn't heed the call of the prophet, that I appointed, and I'll take care of him, which is Hashem's way of saying it's not a capital physical punishment here, but it's uh, a serious punishment from my standpoint, and that's what we call Mitavi Deshamayim. Bechvayit be'ebis ha'hedrin shurasham mitatam b'deshamayim. The Gemaras ha'hedrin lists three violations where the death, so to speak, is in the hands of heaven, and not a physical court capital punishment. One, that's what we just said, not obeying a prophet. Two, which means a prophet who instructs something and then he's hypocritical and doesn't actually follow and observe what he himself instructed. And a prophet that decides to withhold his prophecy and not prophesize. All come from the Pasuk, Asher Lo Yishma al Debre Hanabi Asher Yidaber. All three of those Averot are from the source where Hashem says, He who doesn't listen to the words of the Prophet which he speaks. Kare Be Asher Lo Yashmiah. So Achamim or Doresh, that word Asher Lo Yishma, to also possible Asher Lo Yashmiah, which means doesn't teach, which is the third of those with the Yinavi. Uh, withholds his prophecy. Sanhedrin, Sanhedrin discusses this Mizvah, 
And we have seen prophets that what's called Hura'at Sha'a, which is an instru a temporary instruction for the moment, that did, like Eliyahu and Abi, he built uh, altars in their wrong place in order to disprove the, the false prophets, etc. Um, and of course, the Torah also tells us there's something called the Navi Shechet, which we will do in the Mizvot Lo Ta'aseh, but there's a way to ascertain who that is and who that isn't. But if we have a true prophet, then the, um, the obeyance to his instructions comes even in the most severe situations. Mizvah Kof Ayin Gimel, number 173. The Mizvah to appoint a king, which will who will gather us or unite us and guide us. Ruam Royit Barak, this is because Parashat Kitese. Pasuk says, Som Tasim Alecha Melech, appoint a king upon you. Ufar Kadam Manu, Lishonan Besifre, Achimim already explained in the Midrash that Shalosh Mizvot Nesavu Yisrael Bechin Satam Naaris, that upon entrance to the land, Am Yisrael immediately had three obligations incumbent upon them, which are, Appoint a king, which took them a number of centuries. Um, build a Bet HaMikdash, which also took them a number of centuries, but they had the Mishkan Aaron, and also to destroy Amalek, which until Shaul did that, with the instructions of Shemuel, that also took a number of centuries. But Lashon Sifre, Som Tasim Alecha Melech, the Midrash analyzes that pasuk. Sheteheh emato mutelet alecha. What does the word alecha mean upon you? That his fear should be upon you, meaning that he is an authority and that you should treat him as such. Ve shiyuyam libenu meha kabod, meha gedula, meha tehila, meha ma'ala ad ha tachlita haron. And that we should dedicate our honor and our and our praise and our exalting of him to a great extent, the highest level, to the extent that his level in society should even be higher than a prophet. Even the prophets in his generation. And the Midrash also explained, the law is that a king in certain contexts, takes precedence over a prophet. As long as he doesn't contradict Torah, that he doesn't have the luxury as a prophet does of even a temporary contradicting command, but as long as he doesn't contradict Torah law, we have to, we're obligated from the Torah to always heed his call, and obey his, his instructions. I'm sorry. And anyone who does not obey the instructions of the king, the, it is within the power, the permissible power of the king to kill him as he see fits. He can put him to death. Called Isha Shimyaret Picha, as it says in the prophet, uh, an episode where anyone who was uh, oh, disobeying, rebelling against the king was told to die or to be put to death. The Torah allows someone or king to take vengeance over he who rebels against them. So three different masechot discuss the mizvah of the king. Mizvah Kof Ayin Dalet number one seventy four. He should sival nushmoa lebedin hagadol to obey the great court, known as the Sanhedrin. For asor komashi yisavu mi isur veheter, and whatever they instruct, whether things that you must or things that you must must do or abstain from. Ben hevdel bazeh ben hadavashi is baruhu. Or 
or lefi ayam an yanim she had atam. So let me run on sentence here, but it doesn't matter. It's regardless whether their command is a matter of sevara rational reasoning or a law that they extracted from comparative pesukim or the twelve tools of derasha of deriving laws or something that they agreed upon that's prohibited uh, in context. That we trust in their, in their clear knowledge and their dedication to Torah upon making such a command. We are obligated not to transgress anything, to withhold and, and obey what they command us. This is the great Bedin, known as the Sanhedrin of 71 judges. How do we know this? Also in Parashat Shofetim. Based on the Torah that they instruct you. Says the Midrash, when it says to obey whatever they do, as well. Now, uh, Sanhedrin, they meted out laws and some new takanot and gezerot, but of course, rabbinic law started way before the Sanhedrin. Started with Moshe Rabbeinu. In fact, most rabbinic laws from the prophets, not even from, well, the Sanhed, original Asir Knesset HaGedolah, of course, had some prophets, but afterwards, when it segued into the great Sanhedrin, there wasn't a body of prophets, people that perhaps were divinely inspired, but they weren't prophets, and yet they also enacted takanot and decrees and uh, kept the system going, and that's the Bedin Hagadol that's being referred to over here, but there were Bate Dinim prior to them, in the days of the prophets, their own private bate dinim, like David Melech and so forth, they had also their courts, and they also enacted laws way before the Bedin Hagadol. One more, Mizvah Kofa Ayin 175, the idea of going according to the majority. When there is a dispute among Hachamim in Torah law, or private dispute between two people. Derech Mashal, for instance, like uh, two people, A and B, the Shimon come to court and there's a there's a dispute as to who's guilty and who's innocent. The law is Nimshak Ahar Haro, based on the Pasuk Ahre Rabim, whom Omroyit Ale Ahare Rabim Lahab taught. Based on that Pasuk, you lean, you go according to the majority. That instructs essentially judges in a legal setting upon disputes to go according to majority. Now, we also know that depending on the severity of the law, like capital, capital uh, punishment, you need more than a slim majority. But basically, it's, it's a general idea. Tell us the Gemara that the idea of Rav is a Torah law. Different places in Masech and Hadrin. Just to end with saying that this idea of Rav, despite the fact that in context of the Torah discussion, it was referring to the judges in a court. However, we know that this plays out in other settings like kashrut, for instance, mixtures, you go according to majority. So the majority idea extends itself to different uh, topics in Torah law. Amen.